actually microcontrollers, pretty much every, all of them are like 90 nanometers, I believe. Oh, really? They're huge. Oh. Like any STM32 you buy would be like really? 90 nanometers. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know it was so high. So the processor in my iPhone or whatever is somewhere like two to five or something like that. I yeah. guess two is next generation. And then, wow, most microcontrollers are like 90. That's crazy. Yeah, and it's the thing, like you think of like these big, sexy high-end chips, like GPU, AI, Accelerator, mm -hmm. CPUs, memory, DRAM, SRAM, all this type of stuff that's just been like hyper optimized because they're so generic that you stick a Linux computer in just about every device. But right. apart from that, the other interesting electronics, whether it's something like a BMS or whether it's industrial motor control or some communication protocol type of thing, it's a yeah. sensor, it's robustness, it's driving some circuitry, it's some higher power stuff. Right. All of this type of stuff is, is much, much, much larger. And for that matter, for analog things where you want the precision, you need the size because all of these quantum effects that they're wrangling now at the low nanometer scales for our phones, right. digital electronics, all of those types of effects that don't affect digital systems because they're binary, obviously start really playing into the accuracy of analog systems much, much earlier up the chain. So you've got to separate yeah. things much more physically. Yeah. Um, and so it doesn't matter. You couldn't make the analog stuff smaller anyway. It benefits to make it larger.